Hello everybody, welcome back to another true crime episode of me, Inca Bikini. I hope that the first week of 2021 has treated you well. This week marks the anniversary of a case that has been requested quite a lot in my DMs. Today is eight years since the death of Kendrick Johnson. Now, while he wasn't discovered, his body wasn't found until the 11th of January 2013. It was on the 10th that he died. It's a mammoth story, it's a big one. Sometimes it's confusing with a lot of questions that has completely divided the internet. So without any more preamble, welcome to the anniversary. On January the 11th, 2013, Kendrick Johnson, who was 17 at the time of his death, was discovered in a vertical rolled up mat in the gym of his school. He went to Lowndes High School in the USA in the state of Georgia and he was found head first, so upside down, in the center of a rolled up wrestling mat which stands at about six foot tall. Kids do weird things and he shared a pair of shoes with another student and instead of paying for a locker, they used to keep them at the back of the gym and the investigators speculate, speculated, they still believe that Kendrick went into the rolled up mat to retrieve a shoe and he couldn't get out. His official cause of death was accidental positional asphyxia meaning that he suffocated as a result of being stuck upside down in an enclosed space for a period of time. The blood would have rushed to his head. Very quickly after his body was found, just 24 hours, the investigators ruled Kendrick Johnson's death as an accident and to them the case was closed. But his parents, till this very day, believed that their son was murdered. When he didn't come home from school, his mum called 911. Yes, I'm calling. My son had... Um and then come home from school today and he still haven't got here. Okay, what's your son's name? Kendrick Johnson. It wasn't until the next day that Kendrick's body was found and I think it's easier to tell you the story that investigators and the police believe and then the discrepancies like one after the other because this gets a little bit mad. He lived with his family in Valdosta, Georgia and he attended the Lounders High School. His friends, his family describe him as a sweet and quiet boy and he was a three sport athlete with hopes of one day playing professional football. And while the Georgia Bureau of Investigation worked on the theory that he'd fallen into a mat or got stuck in a mat while looking for a shoe, some of the evidence just doesn't match up to that. Crime Junkie have a really, really good episode of their podcast on this case and link is in the description. They ask all the right questions. When the mat was first unrolled, Kendrick did have one arm stretched above his head. I've seen the um, scene photos. The other arm was down around his waist as though he was struggling for a shoe. He was just in his socks and students did tell investigators that it was common for them to leave their belongings in the mat when they didn't want to pay for a locker. When rolled up, the mat left a 14 inch hole in diameter in the center and his shoulders, Kendrick's shoulders, were 19 inches across and he was five foot ten. It does seem possible that if he's trying to get into the mat and squidge down to find something, then he could have scrunched his shoulders together like this and become smaller. But his parents maintained that his size versus the mat alone, it would just be really difficult for him to get in there. And I feel like you wouldn't really be able to get down too far, but that's what the investigators say. And one of the most baffling mysteries of this case is the black and white gym shoe, the trainer that lay on the ground below Kendrick Johnson. It was the one presumably that he was reaching for. There was no blood on the shoe itself. It was lying on top of the blood. So if he was reaching for it, he would have bled onto the shoe as opposed to bled and then the shoe been placed. A hoodie and a pair of orange and black gym shoes were also found lying on the floor of the gym, as well as traces of blood on the wall nearby. Investigators did test the blood. It revealed that it didn't belong to Kendrick Johnson, but they also reported that the blood had likely been there for a long time. They didn't take the hoodie or other trainers, the orange and black ones, into evidence. I don't even know where they went. There was surveillance footage. It showed Kendrick rocking about in the corridors and also entering the gym, but a whole hour of footage from the gym from that day, the crucial time, is missing. During that hour and five minutes, several students are seen walking into and out of the old gym from the surveillance camera just outside the gym door. All of these kind of nitpicky questions and also what Kendrick Johnson looked like on the autopsy table made his family believe that there was more to the story. They believed that their son's body had been moved, that he was murdered somewhere else and dumped in the gym. Another kind of thing that was a bit weird about this case 
is that while the Georgia state law dictates the coroner be contacted immediately on the discovery of a body, Bill Watson noted that he wasn't notified until six hours after Kendrick's body had been found. But with all of these questions, with all this confuffle in the air, his death was still ruled as an accident. The authorities said that his body showed no injuries following the preliminary autopsy results. And this announcement came just before his friends, his family, and civil rights activists marched outside the high school demanding justice. What do you want? Justice for KJ! When you want it? Now! They believe, and they still do, that his death and the subsequent investigation wasn't and hasn't been taken seriously because of his race. Kendrick Johnson was a black boy and all of the people who were involved in investigating the case were white. The family were angry and actually this doesn't make any sense but key witnesses including janitors who had cleaned the area where Kendrick's body was eventually found, they weren't interviewed until months, I'm talking April 2013 after his death. The Johnson family did release a photo to the media of their son's face as he lay in the funeral home and since then there have been more pictures available of Kendrick Johnson's body and I have it. I considered posting it in this video but to be very very honest I can't. I can't. If you want to see it do your googles. I wish I hadn't seen it. The public was horrified by the photo. They began to rally around the Johnsons in their quest for the truth. As somebody who has seen this picture I understand why you would think that more happened to this boy because he looks like Emmett Till but if you look at on the other hand, and if he really was upside down in a tight enclosed space for that amount of time, I'm sure this could happen too. The pictures are really horrible. Apart from the fact that their son had died suddenly and in suspicious circumstances, there was another huge source of grief for the Johnson family. An independent autopsy found, among other things, that Kendrick's body was stuffed with newspapers when they went to examine his body. The funeral home that processed the body following the investigator's autopsy stated that they had never received the organs from the coroner. Apparently, his internal organs were said to have been destroyed through natural process and they were discarded by the prosecutor before the body was sent back to the funeral home owner, which again puts massive, massive question marks all over this case. They did sue the funeral home for mishandling son's body because there was newspaper clippings in there, there was sawdust in his body but the case was dropped and regardless of what happened to Kendrick Johnson's organs, some people think they were sold for trafficking and organ transplant and black market, others think you know he was in an entire enclosed space and, and they did De degrade very quickly. The organs were lost, they couldn't be tested during a second autopsy and it just aroused further suspicions. The family of Kendrick Johnson wanted a coroner's inquest. That request was denied but a private pathologist was hired to carry out a second autopsy. Kendrick's body was exhumed and this time it revealed that Kendrick Johnson had suffered hemorrhaging on the right side of his neck. In 2014, so a year later, Ebony magazine got themselves entangled in a five million pound lawsuit when they detailed that Kendrick had died at the hands of two white brothers. They didn't include the names, they used pseudonyms, but the description of these brothers closely resembled that of Brian and Brandon Bell. The magazine claimed they killed Kendrick because of a fight they had over a year earlier which had escalated about a girl. Their father was an FBI agent at the time. The Johnson family accused him of covering up the murder by manipulating the school and the authorities. In 2016, the Department of Justice announced that no changes would be filed against anyone in relation to Kendrick Johnson's death considering that there was insufficient evidence to support federal criminal charges. Kendrick Johnson's parents wouldn't give up, they still haven't given up and they have filed lawsuit after lawsuit, um, they've lost the lawsuits, they've been ordered to pay a bunch of money in court costs but still to this day I don't feel satisfied knowing what happened to Kendrick Johnson. I would like to know what you think. I've told you as much as my 10 minute time limit will allow. And I do encourage you to make good use of my research notes and the links. With all of that, what do you think happened to Kendrick Johnson? Do you think it was a tragic accident of a boy who got stuck in a gym mat and died of asphyxia? Or do you think there was foul play at hand? If this was an accident, the one question that just doesn't sit right with me, how did no one hear Kendrick call for help in a high school of over 3,000 students. Drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you next week for another episode of The Anniversary. I'll see you later.